I'm Mr. Sam, and this is Mr. Sam's Science Spectacular. Hit it. Mr. Sam's Science Spectacular. This week's episode features communication between both light and sound. Sam, what are you doing? You are copying me. You hold on, you don't own the letter S in the YouTube world. So you're still copying me. What are you teaching science for anyways? You're a history teacher. To be fair, both history and science have a lot of overlap. Maybe there's a way we can do this episode together. Oh, fine. That's not a terrible idea, but this, this is not going to work. Our audience expects more. So one second. Oh, hey, Sam. Oh, hey, Dave. This is much better. So cameraman Dave played the real theme song and let's get moving. Michelle Science Show. As we discussed in our last couple of episodes, light gives us the ability to see and sound is caused by vibrations. Humans have been using light and sound to communicate for many, many years. Mr. Sam, can you give us some examples of early communication? Of course I can, Miss Shelley. One of the best ways to communicate over long distances before we had all these crazy phones was by using light from fires. You could go high up in a mountain, build a fire, burn it, and in the dark night sky, you could see from very far distances that somebody was okay. In regards to sound, an awesome example to use is the Great Wall of China. This man-made structure would feature soldiers and large drums where if they saw any kind of trouble, they could hit the drums the sound would carry for miles and let people know something's up. Those are some great examples, Mr. Sam. Even today, people still use light and sound to communicate all the time. Something as simple as a traffic light can tell people when to stop and when to go without using any sound at all. On the other hand, people can use sound when they're driving by honking their car horn to get other drivers' attention or just to warn them that cameraman Dave is driving. Exactly. Long before we could even talk to each other, we were able to communicate using light and sound. And as you know, Mr. Sam, lights can also set a mood or a feeling. Theaters and concerts will use spotlights to zoom in on the action, and then they'll use colored lights to set the tone. It could be dark and mysterious, or it can be bright and happy. Sound can also be used to set the tone or the mood. Let's say you're in a haunted house. You're going to hear a lot of low-pitched, spooky sounds. As compared to, say, when Ronnie's playing with his toys and he's really happy, you're going to hear a lot of high-pitched, spooky sounds. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time on another episode of Miss Shelley's Science Show. And uh, Mr. Sam's Science Spectacular. Not fine, whatever. Right. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. Miss Shelley.